from the very chilly kitchen folks. It's minus three outside tonight. I'm pretty cold in the house, hence the attire. But I'm gonna warm things up in here by making a chicken biryani. So let's have a look at the ingredients and there's lots of them. Well, it's chicken biryani. So we've got chicken thigh portions just there. I've got one litre of homemade chicken stock, which is from boiling uh, chicken bones and chicken carcass. Then I've got some vegetables to go in there. I've got some baby courgettes. I've got some chopped onions. And I've only got these because they were a yellow sticker bargain. Otherwise I would have put uh, a couple of onions in. I'm gonna throw some sugar snack peas in, a couple of mushrooms, an orange capsicum pepper or bell pepper to you Americans. For my seasonings, I'm going to be adding salt and pepper, chili flakes, some chicken seasoning, just there, Italian mixed herbs, turmeric, biryani, masala, spice, coriander, cumin, smoked paprika, garlic salt. Then I'm going to add a few raisins and then in my biryani sauce, I'm going to be adding some of these spices to some tomato passata along with a little bit of crunchy peanut butter to give it a bit of a nuttiness and of course with it being a biryani I need rice as well. So first thing I'm going to add my chicken stock into my big wok just here nice and gently. I don't want this going everywhere. Now I'm going to add a little bit of hot water into here to loosen up some of the fat and flavour that's stuck in it. Okay, just like Tom Cruise, making a chicken fat cocktail. But it's all flavour. And that then goes into the wok too. Right, let's have a look at my chicken. So it looks like I've got about seven chicken thigh portions in there. I'm only going to use four in the recipe, but I am going to cook them all anyway. I'm just going to chuck them into that colander and just give them a little rinse. I just like the meat to be clean. I'm going to add my chicken portions into my wok of chicken stock. There we go. And then I'm going to add my bag of onions on top of the chicken. Just push them in so they're underneath the level of the stock. That's good. Gas goes on and woof. Now I want this to come to a gentle simmer, I'm not rushing the process, I don't want it to go nuclear, so I'm quite happy for this to take half an hour before it starts simmering. Once it's started to simmer, I'm going to leave it to simmer for a further 30 minutes. So we'll have an update on that in a bit, but whilst we're waiting for that, let's have a look at the sauce. So the biryani is a bit like the paella or the risotto of the curry world. It is in the rice itself, so the spices and the meat and the vegetables are in the rice and then the sauce is separate. So when I make mine, I'm going to layer mine so the rice and the meat and the veggies are underneath and then I'm going to pour the sauce on top and bake it in the oven. So I'm just going to add my passata into this frying pan and I'm going to rinse this out under the tap. Might as well. Waste not, want not and it'll go a little bit further. That was worth doing. So into my sauce I'm going to add a variety of herbs and spices, beginning with some smoked paprika. Now I'm not measuring, but if you can kind of estimate, a good heaped teaspoonful has probably gone in there. Then I'm going to add some garlic salt. Again a similar amount, heaped teaspoonful. Half a teaspoonful of cumin. Half a teaspoonful of coriander. Half a teaspoonful of turmeric. A teaspoonful of mixed herbs and some biryani masala spice mix. Now I'm probably going to add the equivalent to one heaped teaspoonful of this in there. I'm going to be adding a nice heaped dessert spoonful of crunchy peanut butter which will just give it a really lovely quality. It thickens it a little bit and that nuttiness comes through so you know don't be stingy with this stuff. I almost forgot I want to add a few chilli flakes into my sauce. How did I nearly forget chilli? I don't know. So they need to go in. So I've added the equivalent of about a rounded teaspoonful of chilli flakes. And last but not least into the sauce a few sultanas just to sweeten it because sweet things work well with tomato it brings the flavour out. 
Okay, so this is what my sauce is currently looking like, and that is going on the back ring over there on low. And again, I'm just going to let that come to a gentle simmer. I'm still waiting for the chicken to come to a simmer, but whilst I'm waiting, I'm going to add a few more ingredients, so just to season it. So I'm going to put a bit of salt in, a little bit of pepper in. I'm going to add a few more mixed herbs because I love mixed herbs. I'm going to add some garlic salt into this. And I'm going to add some chicken seasoning. And just pour some of that in. And that just helps to bring out the flavour of the chicken. It does make it really, really tasty. So once again, I should pop the lid back on there. So right now, I'm just playing the waiting game. So whilst I'm playing the waiting game, I'll get my veggies prepared. Okay, so I'm going to chop my veggies on the chopping board and as I'm doing that, I shall chuck them into the colander in the sink. Okay, there's the veggies in the colander. Just going to give them a rinse. Right, I'll leave those to drain. Let's get back over here. So you can see now that the chicken has come to a simmer. I've turned the ring right down and I'm just going to leave that now for 30 minutes. The sauce has started to come to a simmer also, so I need to work the peanut butter into it and the spices around. And that is nice and thick, actually. I don't need to do an awful lot with this. It is just a case of bringing it to heat and blending it. And that'll be a nice spicy, tomatoey and nutty sauce. So leave that to simmer for five more minutes. We'll just have a look at that chicken though. And obviously simmering it is making the stock even better because I'll be extracting oils and flavours from the chicken skin. And the chicken skin's the best bit, trust me on that one. Right, I'm going to turn that off because it's spitting. That's ready anyway. It's 20 minutes later, I've now covered over the sauce and I've just flipped the chicken over again. It's still simmering nicely. Right, this has been simmering now for a good 30 minutes, so I'm going to remove the chicken. I'm going to put four pieces of it into my air fryer basket. And I'm going to put it in there so it's skin side up. So you can see that that is skin side up in there. And I'm going to now pop this into my air fryer. I'm going to have it in at 180 for just about 10 minutes. And what I want to do is brown the skin so it goes a little bit crispy and brown on the outside. The rest of my chicken I'm going to put in the fridge and use in a different recipe. Okay, air fryer on, extractor on, it's all happening. I've got 200 grams, well 202 grams, or 203 grams of white rice with a little bit of brown rice thrown in for good measure. And I'm just going to tip this into my chicken stock. Okay, the rice has come to a simmer. So I'm going to add into the rice some sultanas and then all the veggies which I chopped earlier. This is what I've now got. I want this to come back to a simmer. I'm going to leave the lid ajar like that so the steam can escape and I want this now to simmer and reduce so that the liquid content goes down. In the meantime, let's just have a look at that chicken. Oh yes, I think we can say that that's nice and browned. Okay, the liquid is virtually gone. I'm going to give this five more minutes and then it's getting turned off. Right, five minutes is up. I am now turning the heat completely off. And I'm going to leave this uncovered, let the steam evaporate, and I'll come back to you. Right, it's time to get this put together. So the biryani gets cooked in the oven and I'm using a Moroccan tagine in which to cook it. So I'm going to start by adding my rice in the bottom of the tagine. I'm 
I'm now going to add my chicken on top of the rice. And finally, on top of it all, goes my biryani sauce. So the sauce has gone. I've got a bit of rice left, which I'm going to use in another dish. But here is my biryani. But the recipe isn't done. I'm going to put the lid on. And I'm now going to leave this overnight. So in my tagine, I want the rice to thicken. I want the sauce to percolate down into the rice and I want it to thoroughly flavour the chicken. I'm leaving this for 24 hours. I'm going to let it cool down. It will go in the fridge. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to a gig at the Broodnell Social Club. And when I come back, this is going to go straight in the oven for about 50 minutes on 180 and it will be delicious and piping hot. And I will give you a review when I open it then. So I'll see you tomorrow. It's been a pleasure. Hey folks, it's the next day. It's been a fantastic afternoon of punk rock at the Brugnell Social Club, but now it's back to that biryani. Right, I'm going to get the lid off that biryani and I'm going to make some holes in it now, just using this thermometer, a bit of a stabber, because I want to get a bit of water into it just to loosen up the rice underneath. I've just boiled some water in a kettle and I'm going to pour that on top. And I'm just going to let that sink in. So I'm just decorating the top with some homemade sun-dried tomatoes. I did these in the food dehydrator. They're in olive oil. And then I'm going to cover the top with some tin foil rather than use the tagine lid. And now I'm going to turn my oven on at 180. And this is going in. Now it's going to take the oven about 15 minutes to warm up, but I've put it in anyway because the dish is cold and I want that to warm gradually as the oven warms. I'm going to leave it in there for a total of an hour. So that's warming time plus more time as well. So I'll come back to you in an hour. Right, let's have a look at it. Oh, it's been an hour. Oh, that doesn't look too bad at all, does it? I think that's what you call piping hot. I'm going to pop it back in for just 10 minutes. And then it's done. Right, oven off, and it's coming out. Oh yes, let's just appreciate that. Okay, let's dish up. Oh yes, a bit steamy. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, moment of truth. So first of all, let's try some of this rice with the sauce which has mingled into it. Oh. This is absolutely stunning. This is restaurant standard. Not blowing my own trumpet here, but I think this might be the best ever curry that I've ever made. Right, a bit of chicken with sauce. Mmm, lovely. The tomatoiness, the sweetness of the sauce, it's just gone straight into the chicken. It's absolutely beautiful. Amazing. Right, I'm going to enjoy this. Hope you've enjoyed the film, and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later, folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. 
If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is stewmoss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.